This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Dolphins in the Mekong are in a battle for their very existence. Sex workers are to get social aid. And Cambodia is to enter into the age of high-speed rail. But first, more from our main story. The ongoing battle to preserve Cambodia's fragile ecosystem and wildlife continues. The Fisheries Administration this week took to the waters of the Mekong River, hunting for illegal fishing nets, and what they found was simply shocking. At the end of the operation, they had dismantled kilometre after kilometre of illegal nets. Worst of all, these nets were within a dolphin conservation area. And with more and more dolphins dying, this endangered species is in a fight for its very existence. In the wake of the recent tragic deaths of yet more of Cambodia's endangered dolphins, Fisheries Administration officers in Stung Treng have dismantled more than four kilometres of fishing nets within a dolphin conservation area. Fishery officials in Stung Treng said this week that after a recent case of a dolphin's death, they acted. But it is not just this one dolphin. The facts are, the number of dolphins in the Mekong are decreasing year on year. And this, quite simply, is a trajectory for the extinction of this fragile animal. Add into the equation the overfishing of the river, which greatly reduces the opportunity for the dolphin population to breed and to thrive, severely restricting their natural habitat. And this continued overfishing compounds the potential for the dolphins to be eradicated from the Mekong River. Now, if you're thinking, wow, that's a whole load of nets, that's kilometre after kilometre of nets, it must have taken an awful long time to collect them. Well, the days and the numbers here make the story even sadder. On one single day last week, 2,975 metres of nets were dismantled. The very next day... 2,220 further metres of nets were removed, and it gives you an idea as to how large the problem is. It leaves myself with just a single question. How much longer can these dolphins survive? A new Mekong River Commission report calls for the urgent action against pollution caused by the irresponsible disposal of plastics. There are literally tons of plastic bottles, bags and containers that are not just the blight of the city but ruin much of the countryside. Some consider it to be socially acceptable that when you are finished with a drinks or food container is just to toss it on the ground, showing absolutely no respect at all for the environment. And when this waste enters the food chain, via the rivers and the sea, the problem just grows. We have yet more on the sorry state of the Mekong River. The Mekong River Commission is sounding the alarm on the growing challenge of plastic waste, urging its four member countries to establish a joint and permanent mechanism to monitor and clean up pollutants that are ravaging the ecosystem. The MRC's own monitoring programme in 2020 has stated that Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam and Thailand had produced a staggering 8 million tonnes of plastic waste. The CEO of the MRC has said, Plastic is a modern plague and we must stop plastic pollution to minimise the impact on the Mekong River, but also to contribute to saving the ocean. The ocean itself is under siege and the Mekong River is one of the prime plastic polluters of the oceans. It is a major contributor to the waste 
that is polluting the seas themselves. The threat itself is amplified by microplastics, which are minuscule pieces of degraded plastic, synthetic fibres and plastic beads that can be easily ingested by both humans and animals. Scientific America has told how microplastics have been found to damage organs and can contain hazardous materials that can attack the immune system and stop reproduction. If there is a killer pandemic of the oceans, then its name is plastic. Cambodian lawyers are demanding that US authorities release the Deputy Director of the Department of Wildlife for Cambodian's Forestry Administration, a Mr. Masfal Krai, after Mr. Krai was granted bail by a US District Judge. He had been charged after his alleged involvement with the smuggling of endangered wild monkeys that were being harvested from the jungles of Cambodia. This week, the judge in a Miami courtroom said that Cry is to be released and fitted with a GPS monitoring system by the pre-trial services. A ministry spokeswoman from Cambodia said that Cry has yet to be released despite the US court order. She said, Cry is still being incarcerated and this is wrong. Our lawyers are still working to obtain his release. The agricultural minister also tweeted, asking why was it that Cry was still being detained. The fact of the matter is that releases are never instant, far from it. One department has to inform another, and paperwork to secure the release must not only be drafted, but also processed and then validated. The US court order states that Cry is to be fitted with a GPS monitoring system and immediately thereafter he is to report to the Royal Embassy of Cambodia in Washington DC. Cry was arrested for smuggling endangered species on November the 16th at JFK International Airport in New York, where ironically he was on his way to attend a UN forum on endangered species. He is now facing an eight count indictment with smuggling and conspiracy violation charges against the Protected Species Act. The US Department of Justice has released a statement saying that Mr. Keogh and a Mr. Omlas the Director General of Cambodia's Forestry Administration is also wanted in connection with this case. Both were charged in a southern Florida court and face multiple felony charges on smuggling endangered species. They are alleged members of an international primate smuggling ring. And if convicted, the penalties include many long years in a US jail. Cambodia is a fast developing country and is now looking to reinforce the very arteries of trade that will help develop and improve exports and that is to develop high-speed railways and the plan does not stop there. The aim is to go beyond and to connect with other countries rail networks throughout the whole of Asia to improve both trade and tourism. The Prime Minister said this week that the government has been conducting studies on high-speed railway networks to connect with neighbouring countries. He said, The studies are cited on high-speed railways connecting Phnom Penh to Priya Shinook province and then onto the borders of Thailand. The high-speed rails would be built and renovated from existing rail networks. The current traditional rails are dilapidated and cannot be used. The Kingdom's high-speed rail network has received, in principle, financial support from the Chinese government. The high-speed rails have also been planned to build connections internally to serve for economic development aiming to ease the disparity between the capital and various provinces 
in terms of travel and the transportation of goods. And that is a very critical point. The disparity between urban and rural areas is often quite shocking. I myself travel widely, and the difference is almost that of two separate nations. A rail network would help greatly to connect rural farmers directly to their markets, and this would be of a huge bonus. A senior minister has said, The first step is we want to have a rail connection within the country. And then, if we can make the connections further, we aim for Laos, Thailand and Vietnam. And this would be a huge boost to the economy. Railways are very much a country's arteries. A high-speed rail system would simply accelerate Cambodia to a much more modern society. It is estimated that there are over 51,000 sex workers within the kingdom, and now they are to receive more legitimacy for their trade. As of next year, they will be able to receive social security benefits. The government has taken a radical step and has decided that sex workers will receive social benefits, which are currently available to regular workers in other sectors. This step is to prevent any discrimination against those that work within the sex industry and is seen as a great step forward in reducing the social stigma involved with the trade. The president of the National AIDS Authority said this week that they will be conducting studies to come up with statistics on the sex workers within the country, including those that are inside and outside of the system. The vice chairman of the AIDS Authority added that sex workers who are inside the system are those who are freelancing at entertainment premises such as nightclubs and beer gardens, whilst those that are outside the system are offering services on their terms, mostly in public areas. And he added, those who are working at the entertainment premises will receive a National Social Security Fund ID cards, which will allow them to receive the same benefits from the government that are offered to workers of other registered workplaces. He added that the freelance sex workers will be able to receive social equity cards which will give them access to government assistance for those who earn less than $2.90 a day. A sex worker in Phnom Penh told the Khmer Times that her livelihood will be so much better if she could have access to the government-funded social security fund. She said... It would be great if I can go to a state-run hospital for free, but I wish there would be no discrimination against us just because we are working within the entertainment industry. And remember, these ladies are often hidden in the shadows of society, so these benefits are certainly a step in the right direction in helping them. And now it's time to look at our sports news. And it's a quick glance at the Premier League in England, uh, returning after the finish of the World Cup. And there's nothing really of any surprise here at all. The greatest result, I suppose, is Arsenal still back on form. Uh, they got three precious goals against West Ham and three precious points. That's going to keep them at the top of the table. At the other end of the scale, Crystal Palace got absolutely hammered by Fulham and it was an appalling game apparently. And Leicester City also the same. They lost 3-0. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week.
And here is that weather. And look at it. it honestly, it just could not be nicer. The temperature hovering around the 29, 30, 31 mark. The chance of rain is, well, very slight indeed, sitting at zero. Humidity down in the 40s. What a joy. And if all this is not enough, there's a gentle tickle of a breeze at three miles per hour. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.